I've sent some lamps by a chap called Christopher, and he'd done that thing with LED lamps. You walk into a room and there's an odd smell, and these are absolutely stinking. And he'd noticed that uh, several lamps in the same fitting had all discoloured quite badly. And this is uh, one that looks, I don't know if he's used this one or if it was in the same fitting, but this one looks absolutely immaculate. But uh, these ones, these two, were just absolutely charred and black inside. So uh, looking at one of these lamps, and you'll have to excuse this multi-adapter, it's the only way I could actually plug this into my bayonet cap holder, I couldn't find the direct adapter. So uh, we're back to the iPad, by the way, as you can see, uh, and with Super Apple Flicker Vision. So it's in enhancing the flicker quite dramatically here, but the lamp's rated about 2.5 watts, and the current is about 30 milliamps. That's just for reference. So... Um, the LEDs are quite small, so looking at that, initially I thought, well, if it's 30 milliamps is actually flowing through the LEDs, then, uh, and keep in mind, this this uses a, a capacitive dropper, then that's probably two circuits of LEDs with 15 milliamps divided between them, I should think, because there's actually about 64 LEDs in, in these lamps. So anyway, one of them, uh, well, two of them, were extremely charred and black. And if we take a look at them, uh, this is the circuitry inside. It is a capacitive dropper because keep in mind that, you know, these things are tiny. There's really not that much room to actually put much, you know, circuitry in that converts from 240 volts, in our case, to drive uh, LEDs. So the other option they could have used uh, for mains voltage is one of those modern chips that uh, acts as a sort of like it switches the LEDs in in banks and uh, also acts as a current limiter, but those things tend to get quite hot, but they do kind of self-regulate as well. Um, and there's another version uh, that just uses a, a simple current regulating chip that just when it reaches, when it, it acts as a sort of basically a, a variable resistor, if you will, that just regulates the current through LEDs to keep the intensity constant. And that requires... Um, a fairly large string of series LEDs to make almost nearly the main full mains voltage. And as it heats up, as they always do heat up, then that again it regulates the current down as it you know as it senses the heat build up in, in the unit. So um in the lamp. So these ones use a capacitive dropper though, and the circuitry is like this. In fact, hey well, let's shove that out of the way at the moment and we'll come back to that afterwards. And I'll bring in the notepad because I have doodled it out as one does. So it's a capacitive dropper, but because of the uh, space limitations, they've used two capacitors, these two here. And each of these is rated 330 nanofarad at the full mains voltage. And you think, well, this is a 330 nanofarad capacitor traditionally. And then you, you know, put it next to the little capacitor on that, which is the little sort of grey thing. And, oh, that's, that's a huge difference in the size. Um, uh, these must be, I'm guessing, these are multi-layer ceramic capacitors just rated for quite a high voltage. I wonder how reliable they are. Um, so you've got the two drop capacitors with a 1 mega ohm discharge resistor. That's this little resistor down here, 105, 10 and 5 zeros, 1 mega ohm. And that's just designed to... Uh, so when you unplug that, you don't get a zing off the pins. There's a bridge rectifier, which is this bit here. Um, I could point out in the circuit board as well. The... There's the two capacitors, one on either side, and there's the little bridge rectifier there. Um, and fundamentally, after that, all there is is this 200 ohm resistor, this one here, 2, 0, and 1, 0, uh, which is then in series with what I've worked out and followed the, the actual the tracks to be two sets of 32 LEDs in parallel, that, you know, 32 in series, but then the two sets in parallel. And if you do the math, 2.5 watts divided by 30 milliamps is about 83 volts. Divided by 32 LEDs, it works out about 2.6 volts across each LED, which is pretty close to what you'd expect for, for white LEDs. So, what's actually happened here? Well, it's most likely that it started off with one LED failing and going open circuit, and every single LED in this is sort of like the black spot of death, particularly the ones down here. So I'm guessing that one section because it's more pronounced. Uh, these ones don't really have much of the black spot of death. These ones do. Um, and likewise, on the other side. And I'm guessing that one of these LEDs went open circuit and that pretty much started the chain reaction because then that would break the circuit to those all those LEDs and the current would double through the other set because that would be the only section of LEDs in, in line. 
Meanwhile, that LED would have seen about the 83 volts across it, which wouldn't have been much of an issue. They all have got this little black dot of death in them. That's when the uh, the LED chip goes open circuit inside the bond detached or something, and then it just starts arcing over, and it makes that distinctive black dot. But it's gone a wee bit further, because uh, then an LED has, presumably with the extra stress of taking twice the current getting hotter, one of them's gone open circuit and uh, it's then arced inside because the open circuit voltage would then be the full peak mains voltage, about 330 volts. And that's what's uh, made them more burn up more inside and start tracking between the, the, um, the pads as well, possibly here. I'm not sure if that's just purely down to the arcing the LED, but certainly when, when you consider that if one of these LEDs is arcing inside, then it's going to get pretty hot, just because although the current is still being limited by these capacitors, it's still a modest amount, just a couple of watts of energy effectively can just burn at that point. And uh, that's what's kind of caused the, the effect of multiple LEDs going open circuit and arcing and burning. To be fair, it's not gone as far. The capacitors do limit the current to, you know, limit that. So it's not likely to go in far, but it certainly it looks messy when these uh, mains dropper type uh, LED arrays do go open circuit. So yes, interesting to take a look at. Um, kind of very smelly, I have to say. I got back and this envelope was waiting for me and opened up and thought, oh yeah, yeah, that's quite interesting. I put them down on my bench and then I was walking around the house and I thought, I can smell something burning and I was hunting high and low and it was these were just minging. Honestly, the smell is just acrid, burnt printed circuit board smell. So yeah, interesting that how they've actually done these lamps. I'm pretty sure I've opened one of these before in the same style. But uh, interesting to see how they feel and it's the fact that, you know, the... The arcing is contained in a small area. It's actually split out the side here. It's just popped open. Oh, let's uh, pull that open, in fact. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, the smell is just really coming out now. Oh, 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 that's stinking. Uh, but, yeah, interesting way for these to fail, and uh, but then very common way for these to fail, too.